Hello, I'm Andrew Litton and welcome to the Fortnite Q&A, which probably isn't going to be fortnightly much longer because loads of games coming out and we have kind of missed a month. But anyway, Q&A. So the questions today, straight into them. Needs You, where did you come up with the idea? Uh, the Needs You series, the idea, the name itself um, comes from Your Country Needs You, which is a propaganda poster from the First World War with uh, Lord Kitchener, I believe, on it, pointing, going, the country needs you. Also, he's the guy who said, oh, you need, like, one machine gun per, like, you know, a few hundred men. So, obviously, he's a bit of a moron. Um, but, yeah, that's where the idea of the name came from. And as the series, like, I like community interaction, and since you can rename troops, it's like, well, why don't I rename the troops to people who are watching? And that's where the first idea for it came out, and I trialed it in the first Long War. And then I did it as a Patreon thing because, frankly, it gives the Patreon something that's, you know, fairly easy for me to do and gives them community interaction. And I know there's like a, well, why don't you do it for everyone? In the case is, uh, there's way too many people to do it for everyone. And it allows me to... Actually, the Patreon thing makes it very easy to get a list and I can put that list into the game. And it gives them something, you know, back for supporting the channel. And they're supporting the channel and helping everyone else basically get free content. So that's where the idea came from. I was just like, you know, I like community interaction and this allows you to have a kind of a storyline you can follow. So that's cool. I like community interaction, and I like sort of a, a narrative storyline and a person you can follow, really. Um, what, if anything, made you choose YouTube as a career job? Uh, I released a video and it did really well, and I released a few more and they did really well. I was like, you know what, maybe I can try pushing this. That's really what, like, I didn't choose it, it kind of happened. And then I was like, okay, well, if I push this, I might actually get to work. And that's kind of where I chose it. Like, I was like, okay, well, if I give it a bit more effort, bam. Um, it did take a lot of time to actually become a, a proper job which you know actually makes me enough money to live um i would say that patreon is the thing that really did that for me um i don't want to bang around patreon too much because people don't want me to bang on about patreon they sound like a sales pitch uh but patreon is kind of the thing that allowed this to actually become affordable so you know that point i was like okay now i can actually legitimately do this but yeah so that's cool um can you reconcile your views on the necessity of good UI against your enjoyment of the infamous Dwarf Fortress, a game with UI the quality of gunk-covered cobwebs? Um, the biggest problem is UI makes it difficult to get into a game. And a game like Dwarf Fortress has this massive hurdle because it has basically no UI. It's awful, and the UI that is there isn't consistent. Uh, it, and it, the UX in the UI is very different. Like, you interact different ways to do different things that should be very similar to do, but they aren't. Um, the big problem was if, if Dwarf Fortress was paid, I would probably hate it because you can't pay for something and then expect a massive hurdle to get into it. Uh, it would, you know, push you back. But since it's three, fine. Now, the big issue with Dwarf Fortress is the UI takes learning so much. And every time you want to get back into it, you have to relearn it. So every time I want to play Dwarf Fortress, I play it in like big chunks and then stop for a very long time and then play it in a chunk again and then stop. Because every time I want to play it, I have to spend so much effort learning the UI again that I then binge it, and then I leave it because I forget, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to touch it until I've got time. And that's the problem. Like, it's a really good gameplay and a really good emergent stories you get with sort of the different systems interacting and people getting, you know, maimed and injured and becoming lords and the vampires coming in and stuff. Just really good sort of story that comes from these different systems interacting, but the UI is such garbage that it makes it difficult. If it was paid game, I'd probably hate it, but since it's a three game, I don't. And you get into it and then you're like, okay, maybe, you know, I should donate to the creator. Um, it's kind of weird. I think it's a case of a very good gameplay almost making up for the awful UI. Almost. As it is, I think it comes out on a sort of a swinging scale. Some people will hate it and some people will love it. I can just about accept it, but I do have to say that there are some terrible things about it. The UI is atrocious. I couldn't play it without a tile set. With a tile set, I can play it. Without the tile set, I would it would push it too far for me. It's difficult, but I can just about accept it since it's a three game, and then I love it. Otherwise, I'd be polarized the other way, probably. Um, which show, video game, or book has impacted you the most in your life, and what is the most influential? Um, Firefly, obviously, that's where Stay Shiny comes from. Um, books, I'm not sure, There's lots of books. I mean, you know, you might say Lord of the Rings or something. Lord of the Rings is so influential. It's where we have elves who are sort of high and mighty and noble come from before Lord of the Rings. 
elves are actually more like fairy type creatures, um, sort of mischievous fairies. I think that's what elves really were before Lord of the Rings happened. Um, and I think that's, you know, influential to all of us. For me in particular, I don't know. I don't know what I would say for books for that. Video games, uh, Mass Effect's pretty tempting. Um, you know, I, I like how the storyline in Mass Effect goes, and I think that, you know, it's always something I'll come back to and point out. You know, I really like a good story in a video game, and often video games that are like good gameplay, but not amazing, I'm like, yeah, but the storyline just lets it down. Storyline is kind of a big thing for me in games if it's, you know, trying to push forward a story. Obviously something like Curl Space Rum isn't trying to push forward a story, but games which need a story, I will just lambast if they don't have a good one. Mass Effect had a really good story, it really had a good way to influence the story, and I kind of go back to that often on that, you know, regard. Um, TV shows, films, I don't know for films. Um, do, 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 do. Why does it hurt when I pee? See a doctor. Do you plan your YouTube career as a long time or will you be eventually looking for a real life job? Uh, currently I have no plans to not YouTube. Uh, I don't know if it will be going on forever and you know, I don't plan on that basis. I would never advise anyone to plan on the basis of YouTubing forever because you know, changing trends, you might you know, not want to do it. Also YouTube is such a volatile medium. It's one website and there aren't really any alternatives and it's still kind of all coming together. It's very much the Wild West, you can't guarantee it. So, I don't know. I don't plan to not stop YouTubing. To not stop... To st I don't plan to stop YouTubing anytime soon, but I'm not gonna guarantee I'm gonna be here in two decades time. I, I can't guarantee that. So I'm not planning to stop, but... Do you have any plans to move to 60 FPS recording? Uh, no. Very, very simple answer, no. Several reasons behind this. My biggest reason is I wouldn't be able to get it up my pipe. I have problems with my internet connection being so slow that it, I find it difficult to get, you know, it's tricky to get three episodes a day out. It's tricky. It's not impossible. It's tricky. Uh, it takes me about something like 12 minutes of uploading for each minute of footage you see. So for each 20 minute um, episode, I will be doing four hours of uploading, which means that I need to be uploading half the day every day to get you three episodes. Three episodes at 20 minutes, and you know my episodes tend to knock on for about 25. So you're really looking at, to really get anything more than three episodes a day, I need to be uploading, you know, full time in the day, all the time, etc. And that's tricky. 60 FPS doubles the file size. It's that simple, really. Um, and that makes it even harder. There's also a couple of other reasons. Firstly, it increases the render time, which isn't helpful. I could accept that. Um, but also I find that the actual viewer itself is very taxing compared to 30 FPS videos. And it does mean that people on lower end devices can't really view them. And I myself actually find that when I'm trying to watch a YouTube video while my thing's rendering, render times drop massively when you start viewing 60 FPS content as opposed to 30 FPS content. And while that's kind of acceptable, I can be like, okay, maybe on people on lower devices this would kind of gate them to entry. I'm tempted to do it if I had a better connection but I'm still dubious. As it is, there's no chance of me doing it now. No way, not ever gonna happen, not until I get a better internet connection. No. It's not as noticeable as strategy games. Obviously 60 FPS is better, but with me mostly doing strategy games, it's not as bad. And especially considering stuff like Kerbal Space Program, I don't get to play it at more than 30 FPS because often I'm playing it at about 10 FPS because I tend to make big craft and the physics limitation causes the FPS to tank anyway. Uh, KZP doesn't really matter. Strategy games, it's not as noticeable. There's not as much of a payoff as if I was, you know, saying doing FPS content. If I was doing FPS content, obviously 60 FPS would make a massive difference. Strategy games, not as big a difference. Definitely a difference, but not as big a difference. Kerbal Space Program, pointless, because it never goes above, you know, 40 FPS, even with small craft. Um, Hopefully, no, it'll improve, but that's not really going to happen because I tend to make gigantic craft anyway. Um, by the way, if you see it going, you know, decent FPS when I've got a big craft, that's because I've speeded it up by two times. Uh, questions about Beta 15. I'm going to answer this. A lot of people have been asking. Uh, I want to do Beta 15, but the issue is Beta 15 changed a lot of things, and I think it tried to balance it in a certain way. And while the balancing in a certain way may be balancing, I kind of look at it and I go, that seems to be taking a little bit of the fun out of it. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm still also waiting for some more balance fixes and stuff to come out to uh, uh, just tweak a few things. 
and I'm just a bit like, okay, I'm gonna wait and see what I feel like. Maybe, um, you know, I will play it and I'll tweak a lot of things to how I enjoy it. But the problem is when I do that, people will just go, oh, but you're not playing it properly, or you're not playing the, the true long war, so it doesn't matter. What you do is insignificant. I'll just be there going, well, I'm not enjoying doing this now because people are being silly. So I don't know if I want to do that because while you can tweak stuff, people will complain at you. And if I don't tweak stuff, I'll just get more salt from a couple of the changes that I don't like. Uh, you know, it may, it may be fine, but certain things like, you know, expensive mechs, etc. Ooh, I don't know. We'll see. Also, would I stream the first episode? Uh, it's possible, but I don't know. It, it, it might end, well end up being unlikely because I don't really want to be talking to chat on a YouTube video which is going to be YouTube only. If it was a, you know, a series that I was porting across to YouTube constantly, then that'd be different. But as it is, no, not really. Uh, if I had a better connection, that might be a possible thing because then I could, you know, stream at a better quality and then I could port the better quality over to YouTube directly and it would save my upload, but I don't get to stream anything above 480p at the moment. So, no. Sorry. Uh, with the potential surrender of the aliens in the currency of the Long War, does this mean Sox is now High Lord Emperor of Earth? I don't think we're surrounding, I think we are resetting time due to some sort of... Deus Ex Machina. Basically I'm like rebooting the series rather than quitting and doing a new one. That's the idea. Um, so no, Socks doesn't get to be Emperor. Yet. Do I have more than just Socks as kittens? Uh, no, I only have Socks. I don't really have a very large apartment. I think it'd be unfair. It's borderline sort of the minimum size I'd say for one cat as it is. I don't think I could have any more. I would like more, then they could play together, but for now it's just the one kitty. Sorry, Socks. Um, have you ever heard of EVE Online and what was your opinion on it? I have. I tried playing it for like an hour and then went, eh, it's another MMO. And MMOs really aren't my pace. I don't, like, to get the most for MMO you need to be like really into the online community thing. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I've never been really into the online community of gaming in, in that sort of way, in actual games. I guess it's because I started most of my gaming properly on a console, and then I moved from being a console peasant, and I was so used to Xbox Live where people are just complete and utter assholes that I never really got into it like that. Um, you know, I like talking about the games, I like talking with other gamers, I just don't like gaming with randoms as much as I like, you know, just meeting up with a couple of friends and playing a game. Um, eh. Eve Online, I don't like... I don't, I don't play it, I, I don't think I'd like playing it, it's an MMO, but I love looking at it as a, like a case study in sort of a mini socio environment. It's really interesting. Like all the stuff that goes on in there, I find that fascinating. I, I do read these things about it. So that's really fascinating. I kind of read that, I like it from that point of view. But as a game, I'm kind of like, meh. It's not for me. I'm not saying it's a bad game, no. By all means, it seems to be a great sort of thing. Um, microcosm of reality with, you know, anything goes rules and people like backstabbing people and stealing stuff and assassination plots. But it's, it's not for me. Uh, have I ever suffered from depression? I'm gonna do this one really quick. Um, I know loads of people have suffered from chronic depression and I've never suffered from really acute, severe chronic depression. I've suffered a little bit from some sort of milder depression, um, but you know, getting socks really sorted that. But in general, no, I, I haven't suffered from really acute depression. That said, uh, you know, severe depression is, you know, a perfectly valid form of depression that you need to get medical help about, but so is sort of more mild depressions because they can still lead into other things. And, you know, they're often combined with things like anxiety disorders. So not to poo-poo either one, both are valid. But yeah, I have suffered from, in the past, some sort of minor depression. And also I think talking about it is helpful because then more people can be honest about how they've suffered with things and, you know, seek medical help because it needs to be done. Anyway, uh, that's been the Q&A. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found it enlightening. And if you liked, like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. But until next time, stay shiny.